it's the rat Benjamin. My heart, my brethren. Yeah. Praying without season. Nah, One kind hearted freezing. Let's go. Lips are there, said they're not taking a talk. What the man took for get some love in them heart. Said they're not, said they're not taking a talk. Them not no love, no love in them heart. Let me wisdom and frown upon it. Sink it, and they build them home upon it. Something can them own the planet. Destruction, them sit down on the planet. Love it, decrease and evil, I go hard, you know. Israel lies, Mr. Nova, say, you know, you know. You shine your Christ on your futures and your God, you know. Can't do you nothing. Know. When the adversary pressure you, the stress of you. Now make the enemy get the piss of you. Be clean from the mess of you. Press of you. Don't forget the message of the letter, yeah. Mm-hmm. Stay in prayer. Stay prayed up, uh, send them up, send them up, pray up, yeah. Fight the back until your eyes get shut. I see the enemy lurking at the gun. Stay prayed up, uh, stay prayed up, uh, send them up, send them up, pray up, yeah. Fight the back until your eyes get shut. I see the enemy. No give no energy to negativity, positive vibration are the key. No make it pull it down like gravity, no make it pull it down like gravity. When obstacles are not the way like a big stone Direct the prayers to the man and the big throne Give it to the father and leave it alone Leave it alone Don't render evil for evil When the wicked persecute you season to season Own them and own to no give iniquity No room in your heart The blessing I go come and the blessing I go come Get on your knees and pray for them Hope the father make a way for them Hope he make a way for them I hope they listen to the song when he play for them Stay in prayer, uh, stay in prayer, uh, send them up, send them up, pray up, yeah. Fight them up until your eyes get shut. I see the enemy lurking at the gun. Stay in prayer, uh, stay in prayer, uh, send them up, send them up, pray up, yeah. Fight them up until your eyes get shut. I see the enemy. Uh, wickedness can't stand them. He don't wanna condemn them. Most high hit me, chop them on them, but they no care. I don't understand them. Wickedness can't stand them. He don't wanna condemn them. Most high him reach out them and them. But them no cure. I don't understand them. Palms to the sky, no lie. I send a prayer up. Seems to be cleared up. Most high hit us. Blood's crying out aloud. I know you tear up. World's full of wickedness. Not not be near us. Israel cheer up. Demons they fear us. These are the end times. Christ he prepared us. His love is in honor. That wouldn't change up with the whole armor. We got to stay prayed up. Stay prayed up. Uh, stay prayed up. Uh, send them up. Send them up. Pray up. Yeah. Fight the back until your eyes get shut. I see the enemy lurking at the gun. Stay prayed up. Uh, stay prayed up. Uh, send them up. Send them up. Pray up. Yeah. Fight the back until your eyes get shut. I see the enemy. This is the Born of Levi Experience on GOCC Media. Yes, 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 yes. Shalom, peace and blessings. How's everybody doing? Welcome back to the Born of Levi Experience here on GOCC Media. I am your host, Deacon Hazak. Welcome back. Welcome back, brothers and sisters. Sorry for the tardiness again, but listen. The devil know what he's doing when he's trying to interrupt you. Okay, just, I'm just leaving like that. All right, so much things happening. I'm trying to get home from work, I'm getting wrapped up in a conversation with a chemite. Yes, someone who believes in Kemet and Egypt and all of that. And it, matter of fact, you know what? What's, what's great? I'm gonna talk about that real quick too. But before I do that, before I go off on a tangent. If I'm coming in nice and clear, brothers and sisters, please put a qualm in the chat. And the music that you guys heard, that was from Sharaf Benjamin. Um, Stay Prayed Up, streaming on all major platforms. So that was Sharaf Benjamin featuring M. Dot. Um, shout out, shout out, shout out to my brother Sharaf the Benjamite. Right? I, I definitely wanted to start the show with that song to Stay Prayed Up because, listen, we going to need it. We definitely gonna need it Um, But yeah man Like I was saying man Welcome back to the show But yeah As I'm trying to leave work I don't know I don't know how this happened I just get paired up with this guy On the way back To the depot And just We just talking And and, and, you know He tries to interject And brings his 
philosophy and that, that's what i call that's what i call um what they believe in is philosophy thank you guys for play, for putting the qualms in the chat i appreciate it so that means i'm coming in nice and clear last week i knew i was um coming in a little low but hopefully that this fixed the issue if it's not just let me know and i'll try to fix it throughout the show but yeah what they believe in is philosophy um because at the end of the day they're all philosophizing and they all are reading from a book and they condemn us from reading from a book i don't i don't understand the <laughs> I, don't, I just don't understand the logic y'all telling us bible believers our book is written by a man but your whole philosophy and what you believe was also written by a man but the difference between the men that wrote our book right um compared to the books that y'all wrote or that yeah that y'all reading our books was written by holy men men set apart chosen from the most high or you know endowed with the holy spirit and to give and to and to bring forth the spirit of prophecy none of y'all books bring forth any prophecy um so you know long story short talking to this man um and 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 and, and this is how you dispel what they like to bring forth in a nutshell they like to say that our book is man-made written by a man right uh first he started off by saying yeah you know I, he say cuz he he said yeah uh no cuz i let me let me take my time so i quoted uh the scripture in jeremiah where it's jeremiah i believe 17 and 4 where it says um our people is destroyed for lack of knowledge cuz we were talking about the conditions of our people in the neighborhood right and and you know he says yeah you know i, I like how you quote that you quoted that scripture you know and that book was, pl was plagiarized and he just tried to slip it in real quick and i said like, whoa, whoa 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 you ain't gonna <laughs> you ain't gonna just speed past that so he said so i, I asked him okay you know but and, and mind you it was a it was a peaceful dialogue there was no yelling no screaming because you know we we're in a place of work so it was no you understand and i try not to get into uh religious debates or conversations at work because listen I'm, I'm i'm there for one thing and and that's just to work whatever the case is and if the most High allows me to be a light there then that's what that's what i'm gonna do right so he tries to say that the book was plagiarized and i said okay you say it's plagiarized um please tell me what book did the bible you know did they use to plagiarize from the bible and he's just sitting there with a smile he said i'm gonna tell you i'm gonna tell you brothers and sisters he never told me about 45 minutes talking to this man he, he he never told me what book that the hebrews used to plagiarize the bible right then you know he's just talking talking and you know they do a lot of philosophizing and use a lot of big words to make you to make it sound like what they're saying is believable but you can never let that don't ever let that trump you don't ever let that make you feel like oh he may have a point because he's using words like thesis and uh, what i you don't gotta you know you don't get scared with those words right so at the end of whatever he's saying um i asked him I, so i just i painted the picture like this for him i was like who are those people right now in, in um in israel and he said he said who are you talking about i said the people who are in israel right now who are they and he said oh yeah yeah um you know our brothers well i i'm saying that but he didn't say that. he said yeah the, the, um you know the european jews right jewish people i was like okay and i said so there's two factions of people right now that's fighting over a land and he said and then he finished it for me he said right that's that's not even theirs because they're imposters so you so you understand that they're imposters if there are imposters that mean that there's a people that they're impersonating which you don't believe are real people because you don't believe the bible is real but you know that you could you could see the holes in their understanding because uh, what so he said yeah they're over there and i said right there's two factions of people that's fighting over land that was promised to a certain person which was he said you said you talking about abraham i was like yes of course i was like so he's like do you agree with that he's like yeah you know you know that land is for a specific a particular people but he's still not trying to stay there israelites whatever the case is and i said okay so we both can agree that there's there's people, there's two groups of people 
the Jewish or the Israelis or and the Palestinian state that are both warring over a land that the Bible says was prophesied to be promised or given to a people. He said, yes. And I said, OK, so for a very fictitious book, for a book that you're saying is plagiarized, for a book that you're saying is written by a mere man, there's a group of people over there who believe that they are those people in those books. And politically, they're protected because the world is 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 <laughs> is recognizing them right now as the people of the book. So now you tell me right now, there's whole wars right now happening in the Middle East for a fictitious book. And he just looked at me and then tried to change the subject into something else. But I was like, I already know I got you, but he's going to go home and think about that and try to process it and come back probably tomorrow. Hopefully, I'm going to try to duck him because I don't. Unless the Most High make me run into him again, you know what I mean? Then, you know, it is what it is. I got caught up with that and other things. But, you know, praise the Most High. I am here, right? We give all praises be to the Most High. Oh, no, not wrong sound. All praises be to the Most High. The great I am that I am. And brothers and sisters, I want to, I got to shout this out too. You see the shirt that I'm wearing right now? Let me show y'all this. Right? Look at that. The Hebrew flag of truth. I know y'all seen me put this up on um, uh, during the vlog. This was gifted to me by Brother Asher and his son Ronald. They gifted this shirt to me, and I promised to wear it on the broadcast because, like, this shirt, this shirt is really dope. Like, I really like this shirt. I really appreciate it. So, you know, I'm repping my shirt, my man, Brother Asher. Shout out to you if you're watching. Right. Comment in the chat so I can know who you are, whatever cases. And, you know, praise the most high for that. But you guys see the title of today's uh, conversation. Five year plan in Babylon. Can you set a five year plan living in Babylon? I'm talking about right now, because I mean, back in the days, you we was able to do stuff like that. But can we still set a five year plan? Living here in Babylon, and this is and this conversation also is not just for the it's not just for the older people, but also for the younger generation too. Because a lot of you younger people, you should have a five year plan. But now, my job here is to, um, to direct your focus as to what your five plan your five year plan should look like, right? But what is a five-year plan? We got to talk about it. And the reason why I want to have this conversation is because I don't, I, like, you guys can see it. I can see it. As soon as the pagan ball has dropped and we've entered the so-called year of 2024, I mean, it's been event after event after shocking news and revealings, Right? One after the other. So much things is happening and we're not even, well, well, we're not even halfway through the year yet. Right? We're in the, according to their calendar, we're in the fourth month. So that we still have time left in this so-called year of 2024. And there's so much things that's been happening that's showing like, yo, is this being orchestrated? Is, are, are they trying to send a sign? And brothers and sisters, please, as you come in, hit that like button on your way in, right? And I'm going to talk about some of, the, some of these things. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to even highlight some of these events. Right now, like I said, we are in the year 2024. And it's crazy every time I think about this, how we're four years in from 2020, I don't know if you guys remember that. I don't know if you guys even remember what was taking place during 2020. To me, it still seems like a blur. It's the, it still seems like it was a, it's a blur, right? But nonetheless, we, you know, it came, it went, and four years later, we're here. But, you know, that was four years ago. I'm also going to show a video. Um... Showing the the who, the the W H O or the well um, the well the World <laughs> Health Organization, 
or the W. What do you? What else they call themselves? The the at the 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 W E F the World Economic Forum. Right. So I'm gonna show a video from them at for what their pro, what their projections or I should say prediction is for the year 2030. So as of right now, uh, if to be uh, politi- politically correct, we have six years to 2030. But that's why I ask, is it even possible to have a five-year plan living in Babylon, understanding what their predictions are for the year 2030? And we're going to talk, I'm going to show the video, we're going to talk about it. And I, I, I just want you guys to just keep stuff in mind. It's like how, like the conversation that we had last week that the kingdom is the prize. The kingdom is the focus. No matter what they're doing out there. I mean, it does matter to a certain extent because Christ told us that we must watch, therefore, and pray. So it's, you, you must be doing two things. You must be watching and praying. Shame on you if you're not watching. There's some people who, who say, I don't watch the news. And if this is you, you know, don't take any offense to this. <laughs> okay. But there's some people out there who say, I don't watch the news. How are you watching? What are you watching? Right. And not to say that the news is all factual because it's, it's a stage. And how Elder pointed it out and he how he painted it. During this past Shabbat's lesson Is that media is Satan's mouthpiece Media is how he speaks to the world So so we can't dwell too much on it Or we can't focus too much on it But you must focus You must watch and see what's going on Right? So Watching what's happening on this earth And still trying to Live a life Some people would, would say What is the point What is the point of even going to get a job <clears throat> What is the point Of even going to get an education I'm talking about For those who are in the know If you fell upon this information And the Most High has waking you up And now you have a clue Of who you are uh, It kind of brings you It kind of like you know, snaps you into reality like, okay, all of this doesn't matter, but yet I still have to go through these things. I still have to live. But at the same time, I have to focus on the on the prize, which is the kingdom. And living in this world or, you know, growing up, you know, I don't know I don't know about for all of you guys. For me, you know, it was always taught, you know, when you're dealing with economics or you're dealing with your uh your professional uh, side of life or professional future, you are always told you must have a five-year plan. Some people to this day still don't even know what a five-year plan is. What is what is what you know what that even looked like. So I took the opportunity to do this with you guys. I'm going to show you. I'm going to I'm going to use this website. I'm using. Uh, it's masterclass.com, right? And they drew out five-year goals, how to create a five-year plan, right? I just want to go through this just to show what does a typical five-year plan sound like for someone who's uh, looking to advance them, their, themselves professionally, trying to grow, you're trying to obtain certain a certain um certain accolades in this life but it's also good to have a five-year plan for your personal life you have to set goals for yourself because if you don't set any goals you will be stagnant and and there's there's no way any of us will inherit a kingdom being stagnant that's why that's why christ said you know don't be y'all steady looking for the kingdom to come like you, you, you're just sitting here looking for the kingdom to come to you when the kingdom is in you. So that so that's telling me that I got to bring forth this kingdom. 
You have to bring forth this kingdom. There's something that we must do as kingdom people to bring it forth. And before I go here, I'm going to say this again, right? We must bring it forth. When you look at any established nation on this earth, any established country, if they have a formed nation, to, be, to have a formed nation, one must have what? A government. You must have laws to run this government. You must also have an army to protect that government or to, or to protect that country. And you must also have what? Finances to run the country. These three, the, these three things is what you call a solid nation. A nation with, with laws, a standing army, and, and wealth. Right? These are the three main things you need to run a nation, to run a country, to run a kingdom. Because these modern these uh, countries, these modern day countries or nations are, are the same thing as kingdoms from the past. They just changed it to nations and countries. But they're kingdoms. Okay, so you need these three things to run a kingdom. Christ told us that what? The kingdom come not by observation. So if the kingdom comes not by observation. And we're the kingdom, that means we must provide these three things for our nation, for our kingdom. The, the army part, we, we're not going to worry about that. That Christ is going to handle that when he returns. Christ is bringing the army. So we don't got to worry about that. All right? We got that. We could just check the box off when it comes to a standing army. Christ got that. Right? Um, we may not have the wealth right now. But Christ is also going to bring that. Matter of fact, in the kingdom, the nations will bring that. But that is, that's, that's not stopping us from working right now as well too. But right now, what we have to focus on is the laws. We have laws that governs our nation, that governs our that governs that governs our kingdom, right? So, just want to paint that out there. So, if you don't have any of those things, you don't have a running functional government, right? So now let's go back to this five year plan. So, it says five year goals. How to create a five year plan? It says make a five year plan. Oh, sorry, sorry. I hope you got. Let me enlarge it a little bit. Can I enlarge it? I can. Okay, good. It says making a five-year plan is one of the most effective ways to move forward in life. You see that? To move forward in life. If you're not moving forward, you're standing still. Christ also have a problem with people who stand still. Matter of fact, we're going to read that too. I'm going to show y'all. You cannot be stagnant. Because what are you bringing for him? It says making a five year plan is one of the most effective ways to move forward in life, both personally and professionally. So you don't have to look at it on a professional scale. You could just set a five year goal for your personal life. It says learn how to brainstorm and set a long term plan. So now that's another question. Can we even uh, can we even create a, a long term plan living here in Babylon? I mean, I'm, I'm going to let you guys answer that question um let's go here it says how to make a five-year plan it says after a he says a five-year plan is a roadmap that includes specific goals for personal or or professional betterment see betterment you always want to do better and like i said in the truth you can't be the same person you was last year in the truth this year it's like every year every every uh, uh, marker which is a feast day or even a Sabbath you should be getting better you should be you, you should be becoming that new creature every every day because you wait matter of fact when you got baptized you are a new creature so but you're learning more and more every day right you're not the same person it says follow these steps to develop, to develop a five-year plan so let's look at some of these steps it says list your values that's 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 okay to do right in terms of personal fulfillment, it is crucial to have a sense of your personal values. A personal value is worth is worthwhile is a worthwhile idea, excuse me, or behavior that guides short term decisions. Ah, that sounds like almost being like temperate to me. 
short term decisions, right? Does this work for me? Does not work for me? What's the consequences if I do this? What's the what's the uh, what's the feedback if I don't do this? Like right? Two, it says consider your career. Now, some people might say, should I even should I even go into a career understanding that Babylon has fallen? I mean, you could still get a job <laughs> like, you know, getting a job. You can consider that your career. And, and we can't. That's another thing, too. We can't. Um, I don't want we shouldn't hold ourselves to the standards that was set by the oppressors. Right. They say you need certain um, accolades or certain uh you know, things on your resume to say that you are a successful person. You must be making this amount of money per year to say that you're successful. You must have this amount of degrees. No. Success is someone who's who has an who has an ideal and they go forth and you know pursue that idea and bring it to life. And accomplishes it. That is a that, that's someone who's a success. Okay, someone who trained their whole life or who went to school their whole life and said, you know what? At the end of my degree, I'm gonna be a school teacher. And if you become a school teacher, you are a success. Someone who says, I want to be the greatest rapper alive, and they accomplish that. That person is a success. Someone who says. I want to be a stay at home mom and I want to raise my children and I want to make sure my household is perfect for my family and my husband. That woman is a success. So success is not labeled by the standards of this world. The success is labeled is are actually measured by the standard of that person. But I'm going to put this out there too. You can't just be a bum and said, yeah, I'm a success. I said I wanted to be a bum. No one plans to be a bum. <laughs> I just want to put that out there. All right? So success is a is a, is is someone who goes who has an ideal or an idea and they go after that idea and make it and bring it to life and accomplishes it. That is a success. Right? It says consider a career. Right? Many 5-year plans will focus on career goals, right? What else they say? Another step to do is think about your personal life, right? Five-year plans can go beyond the workplace, you see? So it shouldn't, it's not just, it's not just uh, a professional type of mindset to create a five-year plan as far as, okay, I want to start this job and by year three, I want to be promoted. No, it says it goes beyond the workplace, Right? Personal goals may involve relationships with friends, families, and partners, as well as um, personal goals for your health. So your own personal goals, living space. If you wanna, you wanna probably have your own apartment one day, or you wanna buy a house, or you wanna you're trying to buy land, living space, finances, and and recreation, right? What else? Set your goals, and that's another thing too. You have to set goals for yourself, right? It says create a goal, plan, template, template. And a running list of objectives when setting goals. Continue to refine, revise, and solidify the measurable goals you're pursuing. So you must challenge yourself, right? It says, um, also, make an action plan. What does that consist of? Making an action plan is research the necessary steps to reach your goal. So you want to become a master builder, right? You must go and do the research to see, okay, what are the steps for me to learn how to build? Doing the research. And this is why, and, and, and this is a good tool to use uh, along with what's called faith. Right? Faith is something that we use to say, I believe that I will receive this. But the question is, what are you doing Along with that faith to receive what you what you believe that you're going to accomplish. If you believe that you're going to become uh, a six figure earner, six figure earner, 
What are you doing to earn that six figures? You just, you can't just be sitting on your lap. And and the five year and and these like just looking at these um looking at this list or these steps is all fitting for someone who's chasing a kingdom. Because all we got all you got to do is take these same steps and apply it to the kingdom. Um what else? It says set annual goals if you need it. It says the central unit of units of your five. Let me mute this. Um, the cent the central units of your five year plan should be a twelve month in twelve month in increments. Ideally, each year or of your five year plan will object will will have sorry objectives that build towards your ultimate goal. Right, breaking goals down in milestones. Setting short-term goals with timelines of a week or a month can help you stay on task. So you should be saying from week to week, all right, this week I want to I want to accomplish this. This month I'm focusing on this until you accomplish it. Sometimes we we tend to um start projects and I and I'm guilty of this too, right? To we start start a project and don't see it through and not finish it. So that's something that would help in your five-year uh, plan, right? Breaking down goals and breaking breaking goals down into milestones. So, from this from point A to point B, I'm gonna be doing this and be doing this and be doing that, right? So we see here that this is very detailed as far as how to um, set up a, a five-year plan. Hold on, let me show you this too as well. It even goes into. What is the benefit benefits of a five year plan? Look, a five year plan is an excellent way to shift your life in a des in a desirable direction because now you're actually living with purpose. You're actually living with a purpose. You're actually living to fulfill or to accomplish something. Right? There's people out there who say, "I don't know what my purpose is. I don't know. I don't know." Um, what my gifts are in this in this body? What are you doing to bring those gifts forth? Are you just sitting down, not doing anything, or are you actively working? It says a five year plan is an excellent way to shift your life in a desirable dis direction. Below are some benefits of using this tool. So now let's look at some of the benefits of actually structuring your life to have goals. Five year plans, clarity. Look at this clarity. You can think better. It says when you write down your five year plan, you translate you. um sorry. You translate abstract desires into real world achievable goals. And that's why I, and I think I, I think I mentioned this before. You always want to write down what you want to do, what you want to accomplish. Write it down and see it through. It says control. Clarity, control. I like this. I want to write this down. You get clarity, control. This is this is this this is nice, right? It says control, knowing your goals and having a clear plan for achieving them can significantly reduce your overall stress levels by reducing uncertainty. Right? You may feel more in control. It says motivation, breaking your goals down into achievement milestones and will boost your motivation. Organization, a tangible benefit of having a five-year plan is organizing, is organization, excuse me, setting long-term goals is an excellent way to organize your time. So these are the benefits, right? I like these benefits, clarity, control, motivation, and organization. To me, it sounds like someone who's busy. These, this sounds like someone who's Focus. Then that's not, a, not not a question is. Now the question is, where is your focus? Because you can have these these th those same passions and goals and and the clarity, the motivation, the organization. You could do it for Babylon's sake. But what about for the Most High? What about for the Kingdom to come? What about for what they're preparing for us down the line? And being young. And not really knowing what's next, you know, it could be it could be scary. It could be um, 
nerve wracking because we don't you don't know what to expect. Um, it could be, it could be, uh, you know, a trying st- stressful. I should say use the word stressful because a lot of, a lot of younger people are still trying to find their way. But Babylon or this world have taught us. How to create five-year plans to benefit Babylon. What about having a five-year plan to benefit the kingdom? Have we thought about that? Because I'm going to show y'all the elites, they create five-year plans too to benefit and to protect their assets. So now the question is, what are we doing as children of the Most High, born again, Baptized, waiting for the for, waiting for Christ to return with the army, right? What are we doing to preserve our assets, which is our brothers and sisters, this kingdom, right? What are we doing in that aspect? How? What does our five year goal consist of for us? Why am I saying that? Look at this. Let me play that. I'm gonna play this first video, and I want us to break it down together. It's a symbol now. No. Stop talking. <laughs> um, let me get this for you. I'm sorry. Uh, let me show you this video. <clears throat> I need some water. Let me show you this video. Uh, no, not you. All right. Let me show you this video. To show you, wait, why is it keep? Why is it showing? I'm sorry. One second, y'all. All right, here it is. Let me show you. Let me show you this video. As to why, I asked that question. What are we doing to protect to protect our assets? And we understand what the Most High called us for. Christ called us to to go ye therefore and to preach the gospel, right, of the kingdom to everyone, right? Baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, right? And then teaching them to observe, to do all things. In the midst of that, that's our job, right? But in the midst of that, there's other things that comes along with that, right? So what are we doing to protect ourselves from what they trying to bring forth? Let me sh- let me show you this real quick. So this was from the World Economic Forum. Okay, this was from the World Economic Forum and it says it says here eight predictions for the world in 2030. And that's 6 years from now. So that extra that, that that one year that we got is is a is a grace is a grace, but we have five years to to, to like like let's just say theor- theoretically, right? There's six years, I wouldn't because we're already in to this 2024 year. But I, I, let me just keep the numbers. We have six years to prepare for what this so-called prediction is. Not to say that these predictions are true. I don't know. This is what they put out on their uh, platform. So I don't know. They're calling it a prediction. Is it just a prediction? But this is out here. Right? Eight predictions for the world in 2030. And this is what they put out there. So if we're in 2024, that means that gives, that gives me six years to set a five-year five, five year plan while living here in Babylon. So let's look at let's take a look at this real quick. And we're going to read it together, right? It's only this video is like a, it's only a minute 32. So we're going to go through the whole minute 32 of it, right? It says eight predictions for the world in 2030. It says you will own on oh, oh, we can't just we can't speed past that. We can't speed past that. What what's going on? Okay, it says, it says, you will own nothing and you will be happy. 
I want to I want to read the thing that's in the bottom. I want this thing to go away from the screen. It says I'm gonna try to read it. It says I don't know if you guys could see it on your screen, but I'm gonna read. It, it says based on the, this this is based on the input of members of the World Economic Forum's global future counts consuls. So this came out of their minds. And for some reason, the World Economic Forum or the WHO, all, whatever you want to call these people, they have a lot of say on how our lives are being ran. So these people are very important some, for some reason. I don't know. But this, is, this came from their mind. And it's something that came from their mind is you'll own nothing <laughs> and you'll be happy. How does that even make sense? Let's, let's take a look at this. Whatever you want, you'll rent. It says, whatever you want, you'll rent. And it'll be delivered by drone. This is, this is their prediction for the year 2030. It's, I don't know what kind of world this is. It says, the U.S. won't be... What do they know? It says, the U.S. won't be the world's leading superpower are we seeing that this and i i don't know we see what's happening they just they just open up the borders years ago they would have never done something like this just open up the borders for just random people to just come through and it's not just our brothers from uh venezuela coming through i've seen a video where the majority of the people that was coming through was chinese people <laughs> and you have some Arabs coming through as well too But they're painting it as if it's just You know the northern kingdom that's coming through Is it really? Are we seeing the dismantling of this of this system? I don't know Some would I, I mean I would think You know it, it makes me wonder because it says here And this is this like I said Or not like I said but like they said this came out of the minds of the members of the World Economic Forum. And they said the U.S. won't be the world's leading superpower. So who, where would power go back to? Sounds like prophecy to me. I don't know. It says a handful of countries will dominate. The EU, maybe? Giving it, giving it back to the one with the deadly wound that was, wound that was healed. I don't know. Maybe a handful of countries will will dominate. You won't. <laughs> this is crazy. I. You won't die waiting for an organ donor. Why? We won't transplant. We won't transplant organs. We'll print new ones instead. <laughs> They're going to print new organs, y'all. I need to buy that printer. It says, you'll eat much less meat. How are they predicting this? An occasional treat. Oh, it says an an occasional treat, not a staple, for the good of the environment and our health. So you'll get an occasion. You you won't eat too. You won't eat. You'll eat less meat, but you'll get an occasional treat. Sounds like sounds like a caged animal to me, right? A billion people will be displaced by climate change. How can you predict this? Somebody please tell me, how can you predict something like this? We're six and and we're six years away from that, but this was I think this came out 2021, I believe, or even before that. So a whole 10 years they had this in the plan in, 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 um, in the works. But it says a billion people will be displaced by climate change. It 
It says we'll have it says we'll have to do a better job at welcoming and integrating refugees. So hold up. We are already seeing half of this already take place. Not half, but we're seeing some of this take place. We're already welcoming refugees. So this part of their plan is already in, or prediction, I should say, is already in fruition. It says polluters will have to pay to emit carbon dioxide. Um, carbon, carbon dioxide. So I guess we're also polluters, polluters too because we drive vehicles that emit emissions. So are they telling us that we'll be heavily taxed to drive around? Because we're, we're, we're polluters. We don't ride around in horses unless you want to ride a bike all year round. You drive a car. Polluters will have to pay to admit carbon dioxide. Hmm. There, there will be a global price on carbon. So that's one standard price for carbon emissions. Oil, gas, and all that stuff like that, right? This will make this will help make um, fossil fuels history. Uh, how, but what? All right, well, you know, I'll think about that one more. I don't really know too much about this one. It says, you could be preparing to go to Mars. Okay, now they're going crazy. <laughs> now, now, now they're just going crazy. You could you could be preparing to go to Mars. This is a prediction that they saying, I guess. Scientists will have will will have worked out how to keep you healthy in space. The start of a journey to find alien life. Like why why are they talking about that for? Why is that a prediction for 2030? Alien life. Hmm, I don't know. Western values Western values will have been tested to the breaking point. Mm. Western values I I want I wonder what they could be talking about with this. Huh? What y'all think? Somebody put it in the chat. Let me see cuz y'all y'all be mad smart too. Western values will have been tested to the breaking point the western values right now is, is oh somebody said get chipped up <laughs> that could be getting tested to the breaking point see how many of you would break under that pressure uh, that's a western value but that's like that's more like a world thing we won't be able to live on mars because it doesn't exist right of, of course all right let's continue Checks and balances that underpin or democ or democ democracies must not be forgotten. Okay. What else you got here for us? Like, comment, and share. So this is what they said, but let's not forget how they started off this thing. Let's not forget how they started off this thing. You will own nothing and you and you'll be happy. Doesn't that sound crazy? Don't that sound crazy? Don't that sound crazy? Like, am I the only one that feels like that sounds crazy? It says you will own nothing, but you'll be happy that you own nothing. So are, like, are they even saying that we won't even own our own lives? Like, like, what, like, what are they trying to say? And speaking of that, Chipped Up, let me play. Let me, I seen this video earlier. I got to show this too. I have to show this. It's, it should be in my history. Uh, where is it at? Real quick, real quick, real quick.
Okay, here it is. Let me show you guys this. Let me show you guys this uh this short right here. Can I even play it back? I can play it back. All right, take a look at this, y'all. And Klaus Schwab, right? But this guy right here. Can you imagine that in 10 years when we are sitting here, we have an implant in our uh, brains? You already said, you said, can you imagine 10 years from now when we're sitting here, we have an implant in our brains? And this was in 2020. 10 years from 2020 is what? 2030? Their predictions for 2030, you will you will own nothing but be happy. So uh, let, me, let me play it back. Sorry. Here it goes. But ah, but, here it goes. But can you imagine that in ten years when we are sitting here, we have an implant in our uh, brains, and um, I can immediately feel because you all will have implants. I can and we measure your your brain waves, and I can immediately tell you how the people react, or I can feel. Uh, how the people react um, to your answers? Uh, is it imaginable? But is it imaginable? Can you imagine? So we already see what team he's 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 playing for. He's playing for Satan straight out. He said, "Can you imagine if we all have chips in our brains ten years from now?" And he said, "Then he said, and, and you'll all have it. It's like it's like a guarantee." Because if you're there sitting with them, you know, you play, you want to play ball with them. So you, you're going to have to have the chip in your brain. <laughs> it's a crazy future what these people are trying to draw up for us. Well, well. Sorry. Um, not just that. So he said, you know, <clears throat> they said, they said, we will own nothing and we'll be happy. Mm, that's that's really interesting. Let's take a look at this video too. And the, uh, another man that goes by Bill Gates, the fifth level of hell. He says Bill. It says Bill Gates now owns the most farmland in America, and didn't didn't they say in that in that video we just watched that? We gonna eat less meat, so I guess they want us to, I guess, eat from his farm. I'm not doing that. So, in acres of farmland across the. Oh, Bill Gates has been snatching up 242,000 acres of farmland across the U.S. Enough to make him the top private farmland owner in America. According to the Land Report, the tech billionaire has been purchasing agricultural land for years, building a massive portfolio of farmland in 18 states. His largest holdings are more than 69,000 acres in Louisiana, almost 48,000 acres in Arkansas, and about 20,500 acres in Nebraska. Additionally, he has a stake in 25,750 acres of traditional land in Phoenix, Arizona, which is being developed as a new suburb. It's not clear how Gates' farmland is being used or whether any of the land is being set aside for conservation. This is not Gates' only foray into agriculture. In 2008, the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation announced $306 million in grants to promote high-yield, sustainable agriculture among farmers. Now, now, the question is, why is this man into agriculture? Why is he into farming? This is the same man who was pushing the juice. I mean, is he trying to find a new way to administer the juice through the food? I don't, I don't know farmers in sub-Saharan Africa and South Asia. The foundation also invested in the development of super crops resistant to climate change and super higher crops. yield dairy cows. While Gates may be the country's biggest farmland owner, he's not the largest individual landowner. According to the Land Report's list of the top 100 American landowners, Liberty Media Chair John Malone is the largest landowner with 2.2 million acres of ranches who, who and Who is forests. this? I don't even know who these people are. But I know they ain't good. They ain't for our turn. I can tell you that much. I can tell you that much. They ain't for our turn. So here it is. Come twenty two. Come twenty thirty. You will own nothing, but you'll be happy. 
And this man is buying up all of the farmland. Why? What are we doing? Not just that. And remember, remember I told y'all, right? That, um, remember I told you guys that th- they plan ahead too. And this is why I said we need to start looking to planning ahead. But is it possible to have a five-year, a, a, a professional five-year plan living here in Babylon? Or should we be more so, uh, or should we, should we build more, so, more, more of a, uh, a conservational plan? Right, five-year plan. You could build. We could build a um, a professional five-year plan. But what about a conservational, where we're trying to conserve conserve what we have, conserve who we love, protect what what we have, and protect who we love. Because they're planning something that's super diabolical. It's diabolical to the, like to the. I don't even I can't even tell you how many percent. It probably doesn't it probably doesn't even hold that number. But they're planning. So what about us? We the kingdom. Shouldn't we have a con- a, a, a conservational plan? A plan to conserve conserve us? But uh let me play this video. Look at this. As if they know something is coming. Let me show you this one. Because they, they know something is coming. So they're planning ahead. So I want you guys to take a look Stay at this. Symbol. Take a look at this video right here. And this, this is a video that, you know, most of y'all already know about this already. It says billionaires are building bunkers. Do you know something? Do they know something we don't? I mean, we're, we're counting down to 2030. And we see, we seen, or we just seen some of their predictions. But the major one to me, well, the the couple of major ones to me in that prediction, you'll own nothing and be happy, and you're going to eat less meat. (laughs) Like, what? And those who admit carbon dioxide will be charged extra. Right? So now let's take a look at this. Fair use, right? We're just using this for educational purposes. Now, billionaires have many obsessions. Supercars, ice baths, exotic animals, you name it, and billionaires usually have it. But off late, they seem to have a new obsession. Bunkers. The top 1% are building bunkers. Mark Zuckerberg is constructing one in Hawaii, and it's worth $270 million. $270 million. It's almost... $270 million? For you to put up that kind of money for a bunker, right, as a, you know, just to be safe from, you know, probably nuclear fallouts, right, maybe an insurrection, you know, you want to just be safe, you want to, you know, board up your windows, whatever cases. But this man went and spent $270 million. and if he's able to spend that, that means he has way more than that to his in his disposal billions he has what's 270 million right to us that's a lot of money but to them that's 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 nothing all right i'll spend that but 270 million dollars on a doomsday bunker what do they know is coming between now and 2030 or whatever maybe maybe before then what do they know is coming that they have to do stuff like this but most like a status symbol now. But why do the super rich need bunkers? Yeah. Are they trying to survive a war? Right. Maybe another pandemic? Mm. Or an apocalypse? Oh. Do a- they know something apocalypse. that we do not? Our next report tells you. Blast resistant doors, equipped with its own food and energy supplies. This is a 5,000 square foot shelter located underground in Hawaii. The price tag of the project is $270 million. If you want to survive an apocalypse, this is the place to be. Who does this belong to? Meta CEO Mark Zuckerberg. The billionaire is building a bunker. And he isn't the only one. Former PayPal CEO Peter Thiel tried to build one in New Zealand. 
Bill Gates has plenty of underground security areas, apparently one under each of his homes. Wow. Of course, these are the higher end ones, but you could get yourself Wow. And you and you see you see how sneaky and conniving that is. You're doing all of this to the world. But yet in each of your properties you have a doomsday bunker. Like yo, these guys are crazy, man. Of a basic one for five hundred thousand dollars, <laughs> it's almost like buying an expensive car. And for buying an exp, I'm not spending five hundred thousand on a car. Even honestly, even if I had it, that doesn't mean that that doesn't even make any sense. Why would I spend five hundred thousand on a car? I mean, there's a toy. Some people homes don't even cost that much. But they said that they said that you can buy a bunker for the low end. They said you heard that the low end of five hundred thousand. Okay, okay. Billionaires, it's a good way to use some loose change. But where are they building them? Apparently, all over the world. Hmm. But a popular choice seems to be New Zealand. It's attributed mm. to its secluded location, which brings us to the boom in the companies building these survival shelters. Some of them are just basic shelters. They are underground. They have all the essentials. You can survive there for a few weeks. But a handful of them go a this, step this further, crazy. like this one project look that includes this. an island fortress. This is not just a bunker. The entire island is like a fort with an inflammable moat. What? Basically, if you try to step foot on the island, it will burn down. But you will be perfectly safe inside the underground bunker. Yo, I sounds perf. Wait, who are you trying to? Who are you hiding from? What? You gonna tell me you gonna build an island with a bunker in it, and if someone steps foot on the island, it catches on fire? What, what do you? What do you? What could you have possibly done? To someone to anger them to the point where they want to come after you and you have to have the the island explode its or, or burn itself so that way no one could get on the island. Who you've done something to somebody. You made somebody extremely mad. If I if you gotta create that, you did something. Now the question is, what did you do? What did you do? Yo, this is it doesn't make any sense. What why does someone need that? Perfect for a zombie apocalypse. But why are the super rich building bunkers? What are they so scared of? Hmm. In the last five years, the world has survived a lot. A global pandemic, two wars, climate change. Some of these bunkers have registered nurses. A collection of drugs, decontamination booths, medical supplies. One even has a full-fledged operating table. Basically, you can survive anything in there. It's almost you like you can survive anything in there. Okay, I guess. Like modern day Noah's Ark. If you are in the bunker, you are likely to survive almost all catastrophes. But it's not for everyone. It's only for the chosen few. And here, Noah is not making the choice. The world's super rich are making it for themselves. But beneath all these underground bunkers lies a dark truth. It's that death is truly the great equalizer. Mm. And the super rich, just like us, fear it too. They cannot buy their way out of it, nope. even with these underground bunkers and fortresses. But that hasn't stopped them from. Tr and that's and, and I like I like how he how he, how he put that. He said death is the equalizer for everyone, for the rich and the poor. Solomon said that in the book of Ecclesiastes. He says, "I've watched it." He said. He said another thing that he, he that he noticed. Um. He said another thing that he noticed on this earth. Under the sun. As the rich man dies, so does the poor man um, dies. As the wise man dies, so does the fool. All die of the same death. So you're not really escaping anything. I mean, they just have the money to build, you know, what they're trying to build. But they, you, you're not escaping death. Because guess what? When you do die, you're still going to face a judgment. So what are you really what are you really escaping? And the thing is, it's sad because well, for them it's sad because they really don't have that. This this is what goes to show you that they don't have no hope in anything else. 
this existence is all they got. Like, they, so they want to preserve what they have. You see, with us, it doesn't matter. It don't really matter because we understand where our treasures are. We understand where where we're going and what we're and what we will receive because of it. And these people are really showing how carnal they really are, right? Um, there was was there something else I wanted to show you guys? Hold on, let me check. Let me check. I think there was something else I wanted to show you guys. Let's see. Oh, may, maybe I could show you this, right? Y'all already know this. I think I played some of the other um, videos too premature, but I'm gonna show you this one. Uh, this video right here. Y'all remember this, right? There's no sound on this video. But y'all remember this happening. This happened, what was it? Two, was it, is it two weeks two, two weeks ago? Or last week? I think it was last week. See that? The collapse of the of, of the bridge. Right? And this thing had way more effects than than what we may have thought. So we got the collapse of the bridge. We got them telling us the predictions for 2030. We got the super rich building these doomsday bunkers. And here we are. We're like, what are we doing? Right? And this is why I said, what is our five-year plan? Yeah, you could have a five-year and like I said, now, matter of fact, let me read it to y'all. The reason why I'm saying that you should you should even have a five year plan for your own personal life, because like we read earlier, let me go let me go back to that screen, and I'm gonna read this. I want to read a scripture. I'm gonna go back to this. I want to go back to this uh, screen real quick. And everybody who's coming in, thank you guys for coming in. Please also hit that like button on your way in if you can. Um, look at this. I, we was talking about the five year plan, right? We was talking about what are the benefits of having a five year plan, right? The benefits of having a five year plan basically keeps you busy. And there's a reason why I'm using that word busy, right? You're not remaining stagnant, you're not just sitting down twiddling your thumbs. Keep that in mind, right? It says the benefit of having a five-year plan, right? It promotes clarity, control, motivation. You're motivating. You're motivated to keep going. Remember, the scripture tells us the race is not to the what? The swift, right? So you're going to, day by day, you'll keep going. You have organization, right? You know how to organize. That sounds like someone. That sounds like someone who's um, in charge of their surrounding, of their being. That have leadership skills. That have leadership qualities, right? Because that's what Christ is looking for. He's basically looking for leaders. Because when he returns, he's going to be promoting those. Those who have leadership qualities. Those who who can show control clarity who's motivated those who have organizational skills i'm gonna prove that look let's prove that let's go to the bible now <clears throat> i'm gonna go to the book of luke i believe it's 19 let's go to the book of luke I'm gonna put it, I'm gonna put it up on the screen for you guys as well too, so you guys can read along with me. Um, yeah, that's Luke 19. So now, two things I want to point out in this chapter. This is a good read because I was reading this earlier, right? Reading. So, I'm in Luke 19. 
Luke 19 and 1. So I want you guys to, to pay attention to this. And understand. I just want you to understand Christ. Christ understand his mindset. Understand his mission. How every time he went somewhere, people wanted to see him people wanted to talk to him people were criticizing the things that he was doing not really understanding why he was doing what he was doing but it all made sense to him and for the greater picture of what he was coming to bring forth we all understand that christ was sent to bring forth a kingdom that's the reason why we're all here we don't want nothing to do with this kingdom that we're living in we want nothing to do with this world and we want everything to do with the world to come and the world to come is a kingdom and like i said in the beginning of the broadcast a kingdom you cannot have a kingdom without these three things law a, a army and finances right so now luke 19 and 1 and I know a lot of you read this story before. And if you haven't, let's read it together. It says Luke 19 and 1. It says, and it says, it says, I know it says Jesus there on the screen. But for those of you guys who don't know that Christ's name is not Jesus. His name is Yeshaya or Savior in the Hebrew. But I'm going to read it. It says, and Yeshaya entered and passed through Jericho. And behold, there was a man named Zacchaeus which was the chief among the publicans and he was very rich and he said that he was rich what now the question is what is a publican he was a tax collector but he was chief tax collector so you could say this brother worked for the irs how many of us like the irs speaking of irs i still didn't even file my taxes yet I got to I got to do that this weekend. <laughs> Hopefully I have some time. I got to I got to do that. But he was a publican. And if Zacchaeus was alive today, he would be coming after me. And the people in Israel back then did not like this man. They called him a sinner. He was a he said he was a publican. He was chief of the publicans and he was rich. We can't we can't bypass this right here. He was rich. This brother was wealthy. Right, it says, and he sought to see Yeshaya, who he who he was. He he, of course, he heard about this man's fame. He heard the miracles, so he wanted to see who this man was, and he could not for the press because he was little of stature. So he was a short dude, right? And it says, and he ran before, and climbed up into a sycamore tree. To see him for he sorry for he was to pass that way for he was to pass that way. Excuse me. Christ was supposed to pass that way. And it says, and when Yeshua came to the place, he looked up and he said, yo, man, what you doing up there, man? He said, and he saw him and said unto him, Zacchaeus, make haste and come down for today. I must abide at thy house. Hmm? And he made haste and came down and received him joyfully. Right? And when they saw it, they all murmured. It says when they saw it. Who's the they? You know, it's our people. Always talking, always ah, why, why why do you do something like that? I can I can't believe him. Can't, why why he did that for? You know that's our people, right? And when they saw it. They all murmured, saying that he was gone to be guests with a man that is a sinner. So this man, they, they, they felt this man was a sinner. A tax collector, chief, chief um, tax collector, and someone who was very rich. So he probably was a snobby rich dude, probably looking down at people. Was he really? I don't know. We don't know. But let's read the story. And Zacchaeus stood and said unto the Lord, Behold, Lord, the half of my goods I give to the poor. Mm. 
And if I have taken anything from any man by false accusations, I restore him, not tenfold, fourfold. Right? And Yeshaya said unto him, This day of salvation come to this house, for as much as he also is the son of Abraham. For the son of man is come to seek and to save that which was lost. So, of course, they was calling him a sinner, but he was lost. Yeah, he was doing things that was probably unlawful according to the law to the people. But he restored and gave half of what he had to the poor. So now, how was that, how was that key to the ministry? Who was supposed to help the poor? If you have it, if it's in your power to do it, you must give it. And he came to save those that were lost. So he came and we, and we see that Christ was sitting with someone who most would think there's no way he could get into the kingdom. And Christ did say it too. He said hardly. He says not possible, but he said hardly can the rich enter in. And I guess for the rich to enter in, what he must do? Must take his goods and spread it with the kingdom. Spread it with those that he can help. You see that? And that's why Christ said, this day have salvation come to this house. So it's not impossible for the rich to enter into, king, into the kingdom. It's your intentions with your riches at the end of the day. Right? So now, Christ gives... Uh, he goes into a parable. So right after speaking to this rich man and, and you know, breaking bread with him and, and, you know, having him repent, Christ goes into this parable. And verse 11, it says, And as they heard these things, he added and spake a parable. You see that? Now, I want you guys to listen to this parable of the kingdom. Use it and mind you, it's one complete story. So he flowed into the example of the rich man and what the rich man was supposed to do or what not was supposed to, but what he did with his riches and tie and tying it in to a parable. That's how, look how Christ, look how he's just so, he's just dope on how he teaches and how he brings things to life, right? He says, and as they heard these things, he added and spake a parable because he was nigh to Jerusalem and because they thought that the kingdom of God should immediately appear. He said, therefore, a certain noble man went into a far country to receive for himself a kingdom and to return. So this rich or noble man, which could be, say, a king. He went to go find a kingdom. So now let's see what he does. So he's trying to find one. So that means if he if he's trying to find one, that means he must have laws. He got to bring forth laws. He got to bring forth finances. He got to bring forth an army, right? He says, and he called his 10 servants and delivered. He called 10 servants and delivered them 10 pounds and said unto them, Occupy till I come. So now when you actually go into the word there where it says occupy there in the Greek, right? It means it says to make yourself busy. So I'm going to leave. But when I leave, I don't want you stagnant. I don't want you just standing around waiting for my waiting for me to come back. I want you to take the 10 pounds that I've given you. And when you actually go into the Greek, it also says, it says to occupy or to make busy by trading. Okay. And it says occupy till I come. Don't just stand here waiting for me. Make yourself useful and bring back something for me. But his citizens hated him and sent a message after him saying, we will not have this man to reign over us. So the citizens didn't want to be a part of his kingdom. You could say 
they probably was comfortable with the kingdom that they already had or that they were already part of. Not knowing that the kingdom that they were already a part of was, you know, planning things against them. I'm just using that as a play of words with what we just seen. All right. <laughs> Verse 15, it says, and it came to pass that when he was returned, having received the kingdom, then he commanded those servants to be called unto him to whom he had given the money. That he might know how much every man had gained by trading. It says, then came the first saying, Lord, thy pound hath gained 10 pounds. And he said unto him, well, thou good servant, because thou hast been faithful in very little, thou have thou authority over 10 cities. So you see, Christ was showing that he's looking to give people positions on those who know how to. Hmm? On those who know how to. Have clarity, control, motivation, and and have good organization skills. Right? Christ is looking for those kind of people. Uh, where are we at? Verse That was verse 17. Verse 18. And the second came saying, Lord, thy pound have gained five pounds. And he said, and he said likewise to him, be thou also over five cities so because these particular brothers was or servants were able to display a form of um multiplying right or a form of gain and these are these are useful pieces for the kingdom right and another came saying lord behold here is thy pound which i have Kept laid up in a napkin. So this person said, you know what? I know the kingdom is coming, but let me just hold on to this. Let me hold on to this as much as I can because I don't know when it's I don't know when this the kingdom is gonna come. So I might as well just let me just hold on to it and save it for a rainy day. Hmm. Let's see what was told to this fellow. For I fear thee because thou art an austere man. That means strict. Thou takest up that thou, lit, that thou laidest not down and reapest that thou didst not sow. And he saith unto him, Out of thine own mouth will I judge thee, <laughs> thou wicked servant. So because this man or this particular servant chose not to, to work for the kingdom or to prepare for the kingdom or to make a plan on how can he preserve this kingdom or help this kingdom grow. He says, he judged them out of his own mouth. He says, thou knowest, thou knewest that I was an austere man, taking up that I laid not down and reaping that I did not sow. He said, wherefore then give us, give us not down my money into the bank that at my coming I might have required my own with usury. He said, yo, you could have found something to do with what I gave you. I mean, if you was that unsure, you could have still, you could have just put it into the bank and, you know, hopefully it would have gained some interest. And that would have helped the cause at least. At least you're bringing, you're producing something you're not coming empty-handed to about some. Yeah, uh, I heard. I, I I heard this is where the kingdom is. <laughs> can Can you imagine? We over here building the kingdom. Everybody's putting their hand to the plow, and then you just come out of nowhere. Like, yeah, this. I heard this is where 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 y'all setting up the kingdom. Um, I'm here. Okay, brother. What do you got? I mean, I'm just here. To, I just want to be safe, man. I just. While we over here sweating, working hard day and night, trying to make sure our people are safe, have food to eat, you gonna mean you mean to tell me you you just bringing yourself? You ain't bringing nothing. This is the mindset that Christ wants us to have. Wherefore then, 
givest not thou my money into the bank, that at my coming I might have required my own with usury. And he said unto them that stood by, take from, take from him the pound and give it to him that hath ten pounds. And he said unto them that stood by, I read that already. And they said unto him, Lord, he hath ten pounds. And he says, For I say unto you, that unto every one which hath shall be given. And from him that hath not, even that he hath shall be taken away from him. So whatever you think that you have that you're saving up, it's going to be taken from you anyways. Why not bring it forth for the kingdom? Why not help preserve the kingdom? Why not help bring it forth? It's not just you, 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 or me, 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 me. It's a we. So now that's the question. Because they're working together hand in hand to bring forth those predictions for 2030. Right? Where are we? And he says, but those mine enemies which would not that I should reign over them. These are those who don't want to hear nothing about the kingdom, who don't care about nothing. They just want to continue living their lives. They think that they could just get in just by being a good person. These are the people that just want to stay in the clubs. They want to. They don't want to give up bad habits. Yes, they don't want to give up bad habits. They want to just indulge in their flesh. These are they. For these, for those, my enemies. Which would not that I should reign over them? How how do they wish that they? How do they? How do they say he Christ not going to reign over me? Because then they not they don't want to be subject to his rule, his laws, his commandments. Yeah, you're not going to be able to come into this kingdom without following the law, because without in, without a law there is no kingdom. And that's for the Christians. You got to think about that too. You think Christ is, is, is coming and is bringing in the kingdom of heaven and you're not going to be able to follow no rules in his kingdom? You live here in America, you're following rules. So you think Christ is going to come and not bring you no laws? This is why you have time to practice the laws now so that way when he comes, it's like second nature almost. All right? So... Sorry. He says, but those mine enemies, which would not that I should reign over them, bring hither and what? And slay them before me. So. I don't think it was out of place how Christ used that example with Zacchaeus because everything is a teaching. Like you got to understand the way Christ operated, the way he moved. Every, he used every opportunity, every situation to teach. I mean, it tells us all it tells us that all of his works and his miracles, if we if it was to be written down, a book wouldn't be able to contain them. So there was probably other teaching moments that we know nothing about. But that's pretty much still relevant. But these teaching moments that he said he showed, he used an example of a rich man who they thought was a sinner and used that rich man to help the loss. Having him convert first, then to benefit the kingdom. And then he goes into the example of what it looks like to build a kingdom. So that's the question. What are we doing? What is our what is our five year plan living in Babylon? We okay, so we could already X out Babylon as part of our five year plan. Like and, and I was saying this, I was saying this last week as well too. Some of us would have to just put you're gonna have to put it in your mind. Keep this in your mind. Some of us may not get married. Listen to listen to me clearly. This is how you have to look at this moving forward. Because some of us may have aspirations of wanting to have that big that big wedding and 
you want to invite your family and friends and you want that nice dress and you want the you want the big ring you got to understand that you may not get married you got to understand that you have to accept that some of us have to understand or and accept that there's a possibility that you may not have children you have to understand that some of you and some of us have to understand you may not get that career job that you've been studying for to this day. You may not be able to get it. And I'm, I was saying all that to say that we cannot allow our personal goals and our personal endeavors distract us or stand in the place or as be, a, be, in a, be as a placeholder for the kingdom. Some people just it would would just be satisfied, you know, um, uh, achieving their goals, their personal goals that they set for themselves. But not understanding that you you uh, chasing that, where 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 the kingdom? What are you doing for the kingdom? What are you doing for God's people? What are you doing to bring forth? What are you doing to bring forth a kingdom? What are you doing? So some of us have to put in put it in our minds that whatever goals that or whatever fantasies that you may have had in your head that you wanted to fulfill, and there's nothing wrong with having goals or having certain desires that you want, but keep it in your mind that there's a possibility that you may not get those things. But because you don't get those things, it shouldn't interfere or you shouldn't allow. Okay, who says? Who says you who says you should be getting any type of satisfaction in this life anyways? We're laboring now for the world to come. And as you can see, the the elites, they're working hard right now to secure and to keep safe what they've worked for, what they have going on here. We see what they're doing. You see the predictions that they got going on for for the year 2030. You see the doomsday do I want to doomsday bunkers that they're that 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 they got say um stored for themselves because there's something that they're trying to protect. Because this is all they got for them. This is all this is all it is. Is that this what 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 has they got look what has they got to look forward to? So the same energy that they're putting right f- towards this life we need to put the same energy and have this and move with the same i would say fervent uh zeal or spirit when it comes to preserving our kingdom our future cuz like i said 2030 is 6 years from here a 5 year plan that you could build start start building right now on that what are you doing to preserve the kingdom what are you doing and if you're bringing forth part of the kingdom, what are you doing to preserve that? Are you just sitting around waiting for something to hit the fan and and just pray that the Most High just sends 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 a dove with 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 pieces of food in his mouth like he did for Noah? It's not gonna happen. <laughs> it's not. It's not, it's not happening. What are you doing to ensure the safety for those that you love? Be it. In your household And in, in, in this truth In the church What are you doing And What I'm saying And, and, and when, when we read earlier Where it says Let me read that again uh, Where is it What verse was it again Um, Go up to verse Here it goes in verse 13 when we read this earlier right when it says and he called his 10 servants and delivered them 10 pounds and said unto them keyword occupy till I come. Keep in mind Christ said occupy meaning keep yourself busy. Right. Keep yourself busy but what's 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 the focus. 
the kingdom the, pres the, 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 the preservation of the kingdom how, how are we going to preserve this kingdom how are we, how are we doing that what are we what are we doing to preserve it right occupy till I come don't just sit there doing nothing yeah continue to still set goals for yourself because no, no man knows the hour or the day but we can dang we could we 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 could we could dang sure see the signs we can see the signs we can see what they're doing and how or what they're doing and how they're operating which tells us okay we need to be doing something as well too right i'm not telling you don't 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 go get a job go get a job but you working that job what's on your mind what can you do to produce for the kingdom how are you don't let don't let these 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 uh these jobs that we have right now cuz they're just placeholders for for right now because what else are you going to do but don't let these jobs don't ever let any of these jobs any position remove that zeal or fire that you have for serving the most high it tells you in the scripture that we don't show the most high we love him in word, but in what? In deed. That means you have to show. You have to show some type of love. You got you got to show him what you're doing. And your intentions got to be pure. Your intentions got to be. All right, if you say you're doing this. What is the purpose of why you're doing what you're doing? And you got and some of and sometimes you have to be honest with yourself. Are you doing it for, for, for your own selfish gains, greedy gains? Or are you really doing what you're doing because you love your people and you really want to help your people and you want to see your people safe? You want to see your people win. Right? Praise the most high. We got we to gotta talk about these things. Hold on real quick. I'm going to go to the comment section. I don't know if any of you guys have any questions in the comment section. <clears throat> All right. I'll go to the comment section, but I'm going to, I'm going to play this one more time. I want you guys, I got to, I got to drill this thing home. This is not, y'all got to, <laughs> y'all got to understand how these people, how these people are operating, man. They're not playing with us. So that means we can't play with them. Right? We cannot play with these people. We cannot play with, with our salvation. Sorry. We cannot play with our salvation. Here it is. Look at it. I'm sorry. Where is it? Okay, here. Don't forget this. You will own nothing and you'll be happy. I don't know about y'all, but that does not sit right with me. That, that, that don't sit well with me. I don't, this don't sit well with me. And I always say this too, just, just to paint the picture, right? When we look at, when we look at Egypt, right? When our, our foremothers and our forefathers was in the land of Egypt. And the Most High sent Moses and Aaron to speak to Pharaoh to let the people go, right? He kept going to Pharaoh, let my people go. What was the, what was the reason for us to go three days into the wilderness and to sacrifice and to worship him, right? But every time Moses went and Moses and Aaron went, he would harden Pharaoh's heart. He would harden Pharaoh's heart. And every time Pharaoh would say, you know what? Yeah, this 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 is what y'all want. Y'all want to be free? All right. Make their lives more much more harder. Matter of fact, don't don't help them. Um, taskmasters, don't help them bring. Uh, don't help them get any straw. Let them go fetch it themselves. And I want the same amount still. And every time Most High would heart, every time he would do something, the Most High would send a plague. It was 10 plagues that fell upon Egypt. And 
when the ten like we was all in Egypt too, but we was in a little place called Goshen, right? Joseph before Joseph died, he gave us the best part of the land. So we was in dwelling in Goshen, still in Egypt, while the plagues was falling upon the Egyptians. Right? So I want you guys to understand that while they were in Egypt and the plagues was taking place, the plagues did not affect the children of Israel. It didn't come near their dwelling. So it's like some people be it, it, some people could be afraid and be like, dang, this place, Babylon is falling the thing. We got to leave this place. Who's to say we're going to leave this place? And while, while, while the plagues was falling upon the Egyptians, the Most High protected his chosen, those who were sealed. So, and, and mind you, brothers and sisters, we serve that same God. Like, he, he's, he didn't change. We, we still serve the same. He's the same God that did the same thing in Egypt. He's the same one that revealed his name to us, too. He, he's, he's still him. And we serve him. So am I saying that we don't have nothing to worry about as far as um, securing ourselves? He provides us the information and he's going to give us the tools that we need to make sure that we're protected. Before he sent the plagues. Um, before he sorry before he before he sent the seven years of, of of famine in Egypt again under Joseph's rule, he gave Joseph he gave the king the uh, the Pharaoh the vision, the vision, and but that gave Joseph the insight on what to do to prepare. And Joseph was like, you know what, Most High said it's going to be seven years of plenteous, seven years of famine. So during this plenteous, for every wheat of corn, corn or wheat. This is how much you take away and you put it aside and you store it. And sure enough, that plan worked. So the Most High gave him the vision and also gave him the out or gave him the, the remedy on how to sustain himself through the famine. Same thing the Most High is going to do. Where it says that this is the time of Jacob's trouble, but Jacob shall be saved out of it or will be saved out of it. How do you think Jacob's going to be saved out of it? You think you think it's just going to be a, a, a hand out of nowhere, just providing us things and just giving us stuff and removing us? Most is going to give us he's oh, he's always dealt like that with our people. He's always given us the understanding and given us the tools that we need to find our way out. Most are not going to do nothing different. But the only time he, but when he intervenes is when our back is against the wall. There's no other option. Then boom, split the waters, walk through. You guys get that? If that makes sense. <laughs> only if it makes sense. So, you know, don't, you know, don't, um, don't feel like your back is against the wall because it's not. Right, and don't be fear. Don't be fearful of what of what's to come. Right, we already know. Right, or we we understand that. Um, what what is it? Monday. This there's gonna be a solar eclipse. Right, there's a lot of theories going on right now out there. There's a lot of um, uh, people throwing things out there. And, and you know you know what I hate too. There's, there's people out there uh, making videos and saying. Uh, uh, what what the, they got titles like uh, April eighth, the solar eclipse. This is what God told me to tell you. I, I, don't please, guys. Don't click on videos like that. Those, that's clickbait. Like, what is God telling you that I can't read in the scriptures myself? Like, people just always using the opportunity just to try to be seen, but. Um, you know, brothers and sisters, just you know, you 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 want to still, you still want to be safe, you know, maneuvering out there and while you're walking around. Don't be in in uh 
Try not to try try to avoid crowds. You see a group of people standing around. Oh my gosh, look the eclipse. Oh wow. You want to stay far away from that, man. There's a and uh, and it's crazy because I've been driving and on the highway I've been seeing them post um and this is and they and they're, they're projecting this for upstate New York. It says um solar eclipse event upstate New York. And it says they got a sign that says arrive early stay late i'm I, and i keep seeing this sign and i'm like yo what are y'all talking about right now arrive early stay late why am i staying late for i mean antennas is already up so just be careful out there Stay away from crowd. Stay from. Stay away from crowds. If you don't gotta be outside, I suggest you don't be outside. Not you know, not not fear mongering. But if you don't have to be out there, you know what I'm saying. You don't gotta be out there. Just try to, like I said, try to avoid cr- crowds and stay safe. You know, stock up on your vitamins. Also, make sure you have enough food and rations in your home because you know, just you know, people out there are talking about the, you know, it could be a cyber attack and. Like the other day, like what was it? I think it was sometime last month or two months ago, where cell service to AT and T and T Mobile customers was out for like a couple of hours. They were saying that it was it was some kind of cyber attack. We don't know. So they're planning counter plan, brothers and sisters. Counter plan, right? Um, it's definitely it's definitely 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 very important for you to counter plan and to have matter of fact have a plan have a plan for you and your household have a have a have um some type of um lines of communication it, you know just in case if uh the cell service goes down you should have your 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 household should be equipped with two-way radios brothers and sisters i'm just saying should have some type of communication between you and your family where you could communicate locally right your food should stay have be should be stay, stored up have some extra gas if you need it have some cash on hand if you need cash on hand right right um also i don't think i mentioned this in the beginning of, of the broadcast but you know uh we're getting ready for the new or for the next Hebrew and Bible Academy. Let me see if I can pull it up real quick. I have to do. I didn't. I didn't do this earlier. Let me. Um. Let me go here real quick, and I'll show you guys the new Hebrew and Bible Academy. Whoa! 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 whoa. Here it goes. I want to show this on the screen. Oh wow. This changed. Oh, I don't have that thing. All right, well, but you know, the new Hebrew and Bible Academy, brothers and sisters, is starting, I believe, April 20. I'm going to tell you the exact date. Y'all probably know it better than me. April 21st, Sunday, April 21st, the new or the next Hebrew and Bible, um, a Bible Academy. You want to visit historytimes.org? Yes, 421. Yes, yes, yes. See, I knew y'all knew it better than I did, right? Um, y- you could go to historytimes.org and enroll there. You don't want to miss it, man. You don't, you really don't want to miss it. And uh, the theme for this one uh, is Jacob's Trouble. I knew that one. Right, surviving Jacob's trouble. Right, so what I'm gonna do too, as well, I'm gonna go to the comment section and read off some of the questions. Uh, I was gonna open the lines, um, but I guess I'll save that for another time. Right, but I once again, I do appreciate you guys coming in, uh, calling, uh, like I said, calling, uh, hitting that like button, comments. Oh man. Let me see. There's so much going on over here. Do 
D Nice says, spread the gospel even even at the expense of your own life. To lose your life for Christ's sake is to gain it. Mm, con, I like that. That's the, that's a definitely con con to the one con, right? Uh, where else are we at? Where are we at? Where are we at? <laughs> oh man I'm trying to see if there's any comments or questions And matter of fact if you do have any comments or questions Now's the time to do so You could pl you could put it in the chat I'm going to read it off And maybe we could go through it like that too And once again Shalom Everybody who's, who's, who's now in Right Praise the most high I'm happy that you guys came in and, and look at that And for those of you guys Who's been keeping track And paying attention How many weeks are we are So far Since Passover Let's see How many How many of us know Hmm Let me see Alright three weeks Yes we are three weeks Somebody says four What's the exact one? Three or four? How many weeks? Three? Okay. And how many weeks we got until first fruits? Let's see how many people has really studied. How many weeks we got left until uh, until first fruits? Arak Napash says four weeks. Okay, Khan. Because it's... Because it's seven weeks after Passover, then we have first fruits. So, yes, you guys are keeping track of time. Let me clap it up for y'all because y'all are keeping track of time. All praises be to the most high. All praises, all praises. All right, so I got a question here from Zayas. It says, Shalom Deacon, do you think... Do you think the remark about people's values being tested is in regards to Christianity as a whole? Or do you think it'll narrow down to our beliefs? Mm, that's a good question. I do believe that Christianity has something to do with it. But it's, uh, I believe it's where it says the values. I believe it goes into the moral stability of this country. So the moral stability of this country has already been tested. Y'all, did y'all see what Mr. Mr. Biden did? Hold on. Let me let me put it up on the screen. Let me get that article. Um Let me let me let me let me get that for y'all. <laughs> okay, so so here it is. So it says March 31st. So it says each year on March 31st the world observes the world now the world. I don't it's not the world. Don't let this fool you. The world observes Transgender Day of Visibility. TDOV. What? To raise awareness about transgender people. And mind you, the world does not stand in solidarity with this. This is just a Western mindset. This is the, the U.S. It is a day to celebrate the lives and the, and the contributions of trans people. Really? Um, while also drawing attention to poverty. Now, don't, don't, don't try to throw this in there. Discrimination and violence. And we, we didn't need a day for that. There's violence and discrimination and poverty throughout the city. All year round. It says, um, it says in 2021, U.S. Uh, President Joe Biden. I didn't know this was in, I thought he recently did this. But uh, 2021, U.S. President Joe Biden proclaimed March 31st as Transgender Day of Visibility. Stating in part, I call upon all Americans to join in the fight for equality for all trans. I, and my thing is like, I didn't even know there was a fight for that. I didn't know there was a fight for equality. No one is stopping y'all from doing what y'all want to do. 
y'all just want to push it in people's face. That's just basically what's happening. But no one is fighting y'all and telling you telling you you cannot be what you want to be. You can do what you want to do. Just do it over there. Go in the dark over there and do it. Don't put it in my face, in my children's face. That's just how I feel about it. So that's what I do believe. Um, that's what I do believe. Uh, they're they're testing the the, the values of, of the Western world is basically testing the 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 moral fabric of the so-called American. And here's an here's an example of how they're doing it. <laughs> right. Um, Rick says, how do you balance work and Bible and how do I help for the kingdom to come or provide? So now easy. How do you balance work and work and the Bible? Uh, one, you're not going to quit your job. You're going to still you're still going to work. And two, and during your downtime, I, 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 when you're at work, you're not working the whole eight hours. You do have downtime. You have probably a 15 minute break, a 30 minute break or however, however long your break is. You can use your break to read scripture. Or say a prayer. Or watch or watch a uh, a, a lesson from the from the elders. You could you could choose to do something spiritual during that time. Keeping the most high on your mind while working. And how do and how do you help for the kingdom to come? So now who is the kingdom? Where is the kingdom, I should say? The kingdom is in you. The kingdom is in me. What makes up the kingdom? Is it a building or is the people? The people make up the kingdom. So now the question is, where are the people gathering? That's first and foremost. So you got to find out where the people of the kingdom are gathering, which is, i.e., the people of this church, the Gathering of Christ Church. Link in with your local church, Gathering of Christ Church, right? And help the people in the kingdom, whatever that help could be, whatever, whatever it is that you're using that you could that you possibly use to minister. Whether you sing, whether you cook, whether you dance, whatever it is that's, that's going to help edify the people. And when the time comes, whatever you have built up and whatever you have uh, stored up for yourself, it's going to be a coming time where it's going to have to be used to help supply each each and every, you know everybody so you help the kingdom by being where the kingdom is if that makes sense chosen one says the end of the end of all flesh was all right i don't even know what 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 are you talking about i'm gonna skip past that because i don't know what you're talking about Yeah, you about ten seconds from going to Gigabyte Land. I don't know what that is. Um, where we at? Let's see what else we got. What else we got? Let me keep going down. Let me see. All right, I got another. Got a question here from Crystal. Can you give us a general ex, uh, example of what a five-year plan would look like? I understand that everyone look, everyone look different, but but can you give somewhat of what it would look like? Well, okay, um, like we did it over here. Hold on. I don't know if you came in later in the broadcast. Sorry. I don't know why that's why that popped up. <laughs> but I don't know why. I, I don't know uh, if you came in later in the broadcast. But in the beginning of the broadcast, I showed this website. And I was reading from this website um, from Masterclass. How to make a five-year plan. So you could start here. 
um, moderator, one of the moderators, if you can put this link in the chat. Uh, I, can I do it? No, I can't do it. I got two separate computers. I think I probably could. I'll try to put it in the chat for you so you can look at it later. But it says here, but just go to, um, just type it in Google, um, master class, five-year um, five plan, and they, this, will, this, um, this link will pop up. So you could go, you could use this as a guide on setting up a five-year plan for yourself. You want to start with listing, listing your values, considering your career if you are considering one, thinking about your personal life, set your goals, make an action plan, right? You could use this as a, as a, as a somewhat of a guide, right? But yeah, this, I found this article very informative. So you can use that as a guide. But like, but it goes into someone's personal plan. Everybody's personal plan is different. You're, you can make you can make a five year plan. Looking at okay to make it easier, looking at what's happening on the earth and understanding the time. You can make a five year plan for what you know is happening on the earth right now, and how can you preserve yourself or work yourself around it. If that makes sense, hopefully that makes sense. But you want to try to pattern your five year plan based upon survival and conservation or preservation, I should say. You, you want to look, you want to look to, uh, for, for preservation. Uh, if that helps, that was to Crystal. Solomon says, I put I put my earbuds in and watch and listen to lessons through the day at work. That's 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 a, exactly another way to do it, too. If you if your job affords you the opportunity to do so, do so. It says. J N the truth, it says, is it possible that we could invest in a big piece of land that we could build collectively as a whole? I mean, that that. That sounds very great. That sounds very good. But when it comes to that, a whole lot of things gotta be gotta be taken in consideration. Who's gonna who's gonna manage the land? Whose name is it gonna be under? Who you know, what is gonna be the rules, the regulations? And you, you can't just be having all random people just say, Yeah, you wanna come and live in this land? Yeah, come here, here this land and now now you got a whole bunch of people, strangers that don't really know each other in a land. And nothing is getting done, and a whole bunch of crazy stuff is going in there. So it got to be done properly. But that's, you know, you know, like um, what's that name of that 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 TV series, The Walking Dead. Eventually, we may have to break down a little small civilizations like that, right? But it got it got to come, you know, when it's ready, and people got to be ready for that. Um, hmm. Arak Nepal says the spirit be absolutely moving. I was discussing the scripture with my wife last night. All praises be to the Most High. See, all praises. See, I, I knew why. I knew that was the reason why Satan was trying to deter me and make me late. Now, I ain't gonna let that happen no more on a Thursday. Listen, any everybody that wanted to talk was trying to talk. Somebody somebody ask, uh, what is this? Tiara, or Tiara. Hopefully, I'm saying it right. It says, "What if I don't have a local body in my area?" That is a great, 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 great um, point. What if you don't have a local body in your area? The qu the next question is, what is the closest body to your area? And what area are you from? So you may have you may have to do some traveling if you may if, if you if if you want if you have to. You may have to travel. Cause there's a lot of people who don't have the luxury that have a body in their in, in their neighborhood or in their town or in their city. But you may have to travel to the next town or to the next city. You know, that may be that may be your po a possibility for you to stay linked in. And try and once you 
once you have um found that that body in your you know that's in close proximity to your city you want to stay in contact with the leadership there so you don't so you're not forgotten right that's the best advice that i could give you um <laughs> let me keep reading this thing just jumped out of nowhere all right uh, what else we got here Steve Israel also says what if I don't have transportation to get to the body he says what if I don't have transportation and you live at home then you are you are under your parents responsibility or jurisdiction but if you are an adult or a young adult you should have a job right now unless you're in school and if you have a job you have to find a way or you should make you can make that part of your um your 5 year goal get some transportation right Try to find a way to either, if it's if it's feasible to, buy a vehicle. If not, if your city allows it, take public transportation. Or what you what you can also do is, if you are already linked in with your local body, find out if there could be if you guys could work out some type of carpool situation. And when I say work out a carpool situation, and I want and, and this I, I want to say this too, for for people who carpool. Understand that that person who owns the vehicle, they have to pay for gas. They have to pay for maintenance on the car. They have to leave their house earlier to come and pick you up. So you want to be courteous and you want to be mindful that the person that you're taking a ride from is actually, it's a sacrifice that they're doing for you. And you know, one thing about us, you know, sometimes, especially if we want to be humble people, we don't want to say, yo brother, you got gas money or sister, you got, you know, we, you know, we wouldn't say, you know, we just want to, we'll just expect, but that's etiquette you want to you want to you want to you want to apply proper etiquette to the person who's going out of their way and sacrificing for you to pick you up every 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 week if that person does pick you up every week if that person is picking you up and dropping you off every week every week you should be donating or contributing to that person's gas that's the that's the least you can do a shalom and thank you for the ride. It's not going to cut it every week. I'm just, I, it's, I, I hate to be Frank, but I got it. Wait, who is Frank? But I hate to do that, but it got to be said. So we, so we have to learn etiquette. Some people don't even, some people, and it's sad. We love our people, but some people don't have an etiquette. And you should be a contribution, not, not a, um, a burden. We got we to gotta do better than that. We are royal people, man. We got to pay for our way. We got to pay our way. Our, 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 nothing is free. So if you don't have transportation to your local body, and but if you're already in communication with the brothers and sisters at that body, maybe you guys can develop some type of buddy system or um, carpooling system and talk about how can we contribute to this. And you want to be paying your way. All right. I'm saying that. Hopefully, whoever needs to hear that, hear it. All right. Okay, breathe. Hopefully that answers your question. Um, look at this. One ak two malak for Yahweh. Okay, that's a long name. Seven Ahaya one. <laughs> I can't say it. All right, I'm just gonna call you seven Ahaya one. <laughs> seven Ahaya one says. I have to travel an hour via bus and tram and tram. And you see that? 
Now this is what you let me let me clap this up. Now that's what you call dedication. Seven Ohio one says he has to travel an hour via bus and tram just to make it to Shabbat. Dedication. So let's take that into consideration into consideration as well too. Uh, this thing just jumped. So kudos to you, Ahaya Seven One, or Seven Ahaya One. Um, somebody says I just got into Phoenix, still trying to, still, tr still trying and waiting on a response from the body. Okay, just give them some time. Send them another email as well too. Make it your business. Maybe send an email once a week. All right, to show the urgency. Uh, where we at? Okay, this is person again. All right, hold on. I know what I'm going to do. Okay. Um, Miss Bree, Miss Bree, Miss Bree Keeper says, I drive minimum one hour on a good day. See, there you go. Yeah, so gotta. We're gonna have to learn how to start driving and you know getting our way around. It says, um, "Shalom, Deacon. Have you read the Apocalypse of Baruch? Have I read the Apocalypse of Baruch? Have I read it? I'm pretty sure I have. But uh, is there a, is there a particular reason you're bringing that up? I guess okay." It says. Solomon says, it's been a few years since I've been to the Atlanta body, but I'm just going to rent a car for twice in every month. Tired of excuses, not going. Exactly. Thank you for um, for admitting that. So it's all excuses, right? So praise the most high that you came to the uh, to the realization that you need to be a part of the body. Man, listen, you want to link in. You don't want to be forgotten. Um, brother brother um, Osher says, or yeah, Osher says, Shalom, Deacon. Thank you for the shout out. Oh, Osher. Oh, my brother right there. Oh, yeah, that's my brother Osher. Yes, sir. I thought, you was, I thought it was Asher almost, but it's Osher with an O. My brother. So thank you for the shout out for the Hebrew flag shirt. Yes, all praises. Yes, all praises. The water for the shirt, man. Uh, you know, I love this shirt. It's beautiful. Right. Um, next one we got, it says, Deacon, is it wise to move to an area where I can get to church? I live in Florida. Do not drive. And, the, and church is three hours away and I live alone. I would say it is using wisdom moving closer to the body if you live alone. Three hours away, you want to, mind you, we're, 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 we were t we're talking about five-year plans here. And they're trying to do certain things between now and 2030. So you want to put yourself in a position where you're in arm's reach, if not, or a drive away some, to somebody who... Who knows you Right So yes I would say it, You are using wisdom Moving closer or Closer uh, But hopefully That doesn't Affect your job situation or However your job situation is But you will be Connected to the body And that's that, And that's the goal So yes mm, Let's go Let's go Let's go What else we got Wisdom knowledge, this thing just keeps on jumping. Wisdom knowledge says, how about if you have a plan and there is always obstacles that prevent you of accomplishing the plan? It doesn't matter if if it's a one year or two year plan. All right. Well, if there's always an obstacle, maybe maybe it's just that you're not focused enough. Maybe you're allowing distractions to come up. 
because yeah, there's 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 certain things where there's certain times where um, life happens, and we have to change how we do certain things because of life. Uh, it could be a death in a family, the birth of a, a new life, a, a child, a new job, relocation. So these things does play a part. But if you're saying that um, obstacles prevent you. What kind of obstacles? It, it all depends on the obstacles, and this is why in the in the same article we was reading earlier, it says um, they said you want to create short term goals too, or what's called milestones, where you got a the you got a big overall goal, but within that big overall goal, you're t- you're tackling you're tackling it little by little. So you're saying, all right, I want to do this whole thing. Like basically I want to build this whole house, but the first month I want to focus on building the door frame and you, you like, don't look at the bigger picture. Don't look at the, the finished project of the house. You're looking at that one part of the project, the door frame, start there, at least start somewhere. Also write, write down too. write down your plans that also help write it down. Write down a structured list of how you want to do it. All right. It says my uh, Northwest of Oklahoma. It says my family does that. We offer a ride to a few people. We have to drive almost two hours to fellowship. Praise the most high. I'll clap it up for you too. Yeah. There's some dedicated people. I mean, there's you know, I've heard stories where people have to drive, was it three or four hours one way and do it going back. And we have people who just won't get on a bus or a train. And we got we got we got Hard, you, we got diligent people who's doing that faithfully, week, week, weekly, and the Most High. And, and listen, don't think that that's 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 being done for none. The Most High is taking note of that, and He also taking note of of the complainers too. So, praise the Most High for you, and keep up the good work. Wise music says gathering is a work. You have to explain that. Because there's many people that gather. And and mind you, in a gathering, you will find both wheat and tares. So the tares, their work is to is to create disorder. Would you consider that a work, a part of a, a gathering? So the wor- a work is, is more than just gathering together. It's easy to come together. Now, finding out where do you fit in and what you need to do, putting your hands to the plow. That's where the real real work comes from, if that makes more sense. Uh, let's see. We'll take a couple of more, and then it's Godspeed. Victor Gabriel says, "Should I take should I take a demotion at work in order to be off on Sabbaths and be able to congregate?" And well, that that that's 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 something that you're gonna have to, um, I guess, speak to your your family about, whether whether it's your wife, your children, whatever the case is. Financially, will you be able? You gotta you gotta ask yourself these questions. Financially, will you be able to sustain with a demotion? Or speak to your supervisors and see if. You can give them a Sabbath exemption because we do offer that as far as the church for baptized members. We do have Sabbath exemption forms to give to your employers. So you got to take all of these things in consideration before you make a, a decision like that. Um, What else? Where else we got here? Okay, wise music says, I mean, that's the beginning of your works. The rest will come. Con. Yes. Yes. You see? And, and that's, this is why it's very important for us to speak in, in complete sentences so we could we don't get so things don't get lost in translation. So yes, yes. You are hundred percent right. Wise music. Uh 
Right. So, brothers and sisters, I'm so happy that we had this conversation. I'm so happy. Thank you guys for the questions as well, too. Hopefully, um, you know, I brought some levity and brought some um, some ideas to you guys to help you guys, uh, you know, make better plans. And as we see these days, uh, as we see these days coming, man, we want to make sure we're planning accordingly because we see what they're doing. They're planning accordingly and they're expecting us to fall for the bait. Let's not be those ones. Um, I seen. Let me get this one right here. Christopher asks, Shalom Deacon, I want to plant much coconut for the body of the church. Well, well I doing it, but there's no church or GOCC here, so I'm doing it for the poor. Okay, praise the most high. Yes, you can do things to help the poor. Christ also said in Matthew 25, when I was when I was poor, you gave me, you know, when I was hungry, you gave me food. When I was thirsty, you gave me drink. When I was when I was um, when I was naked, you gave me clothes. And he says, when you have done it to the least of my brethren, you have done it unto me. So, yes, keep on doing the work until the most high brings you closer to where we are with the body as well, too. So I, I like that. Keep doing that, my brother. And. and where are you I, I I think that that's my my brother Car, um Christopher from Carsal I believe. But yes, continue to do that. I I I I endorse and I support that. Um, you doing that. But yes, brothers and sisters, I appreciate you guys. Yes, my man Christopher, all praises. Yeah, keep doing what you're doing. Trust me, the Most High sees your heart. He sees your works. And you will be rewarded for that in due time, my brother. I'm telling you. And stay, but, you know, in the meantime, stay linked in with the church. Um, try to get linked in. Right? I know you linked in here. You, 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 you know, you email me all the time. So, you know, let's, let's stay, stay connected. Right? Um, but, yes, all praises be to the Most High, my brothers and sisters. Like all good things, this good thing must also come to an end. So I appreciate you, brothers and sisters, coming in. Thank you for this broadcast. Thank you for the engagement. Man, it was a blessing. You could be anywhere in the world, but you're now tuned into the Born of Levi experience. So, yes, 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 yes. You brothers and sisters, y'all have a good night. Um, enjoy tomorrow. Have a great and safe day tomorrow. Right. Remember, we're going in. We're coming into the Sabbath. Right. You want to make sure you're preparing for the Sabbath. Make sure you have everything that you need um, and getting ready for service and bring your all. Listen, bring your all to service this Saturday. Don't bring half. Bring all. And praise the Most High and exalt Him as much as you can. If they, if they sing it and praise it and worship it, make, it, make sure you sing it and praise it and worship it with them. Don't just be standing there and looking at them like you, you're looking for a show. We are the show. We are, we are there to show the Most High how much we love Him. So with all that you have, exalt the Most High. And... um. Be safe. Stay prayed up. Stay prayed up. Stay. I'm gonna play that on the way out. Stay prayed up and sin not, so we could see Zion, man. Right. My ox, my Stay prayed up, y'all. Shalom. Yeah. Praying without ceasing. Nah, One kind heart ain't freezing. Let's go. Lips of the nurse, they not take no talk. What them a take for get some loving at them heart? Say the nurse, they not take no talk. Them not no love, no loving at them heart. Let me wisdom man frown up on it. Sinking sand, they build them home up on it. So some think on them own the planet. Destruction, them sit down on the planet. Love it, decrease and evil are gonna add now. Israel lies, Mr. Dupa said the Lord, you know You shine your Christ on your foot, you shine your God, you know Can't do you nothing know. When the adversary pressure you, the stress of you Don't make the enemy get the piss of you Be clean from the mess of you, press of you Don't forget the message of the letter, yeah mm, Stay in prayer, uh, stay in prayer uh, Send them up, send them up, pray up yeah. Fight the battle till your eyes them 
shot I see the enemy lurking at the gun Stay prayed up, stay prayed up Send them up, send them up, pray up Fight the back until your eyes them shut I see the enemy No give no energy to negativity Positive vibration are the key No make it pull it down like gravity No make it pull it down like gravity When obstacles are not the way like a big stone Direct your prayers to the man and the big throne Give it to the father and leave it alone Leave it alone